Hey, what's happening everyone? Gaff the Master 974 back again today doing another Valve source code tutorial after so long. And today I'm going to be talking about how to add the flare gun from Half-Life 2 Beta into Source 2013. And for a change I'm going to cover both single player and multiplayer mods because this is fairly straightforward. And I'm also going to be talking about a game breaking glitch as well, so stay tuned for the fix for that. But first off, I have to thank Twilight Bob and Mazdo for suggesting that I cover the flare gun in comments on the videos. And thanks to anybody else who suggested the flare gun to me that I haven't mentioned in this case. So basically to start off with, you just want to navigate to your source code directory, open up the games solution. And if you navigate to the server side, you should be able to go into source files, HL2 DLL, and unused and you'd find weaponflaregun.h and weaponflaregun.cpp inside of this unused section and if you want to you can look into those files so inside weaponflaregun.h you will see a class definition for the flares and also for the flare gun and in weaponflaregun.cpp you'd also see expanded code for the flares and also the flare gun code for the weapon at least and that is included inside of a hashtag if zero statement, which means that it's never going to be executed. So to add the flare gun, you just want to change the zero to a one, or remove the hashtag if zero and the corresponding hashtag end if parts of the code. That way the flare gun will be added. So you don't need to worry about any client side version of the flare gun code, because if you go to cweaponstubshl2.cpp, then you'd see that there is already a definition for the client side version of the flare gun and it's outside of the HL2MP check section. So basically it's already defined in the client code so you don't need to worry about that whatsoever. And so one thing that would be useful to do is restore the flare round ammunition type. So here you'd want to go to hl2gamewalls.cpp and this is for single player mods by the way. Right near the bottom of the file with the def.addammo type stuff. You'd want to add something like def.addammo type of flare round inside of speech marks. Uh, it's going to do incendiary damage, so damage burn, uh, tracer non. And you can do two different things. You can either use convars or you can hard code values specifically for player damage, NPC damage, and maximum ammo. So you could do SK player damage flare round, SK NPC damage flare round, SK max flare round, and then bullet impulse of 1500 and then 600, and then zero for the flags. Now the player damage, NPC damage, and maximum ammo, at least from Half-Life 2 beta, were given values of 12, 2, and 20 respectively. But you can change these numbers to whatever you want. Um, but if you do go down the route of using convars, then around line 123, you'll see that the convars are commented out. So you just want to delete the two forward slashes at the front of them to redefine them so that they'll be usable. And then you want to go to skill.cfg and add SK player damage flare round, SK NPC damage flare round, SK max flare round, and give them values that you see fit. For Source 2013 multiplayer, because that works ever so slightly differently, you want to go to HL2MP game rules instead. And for whatever reason, the def.addammo type stuff is in the middle of the file. I think it's around line 925. And you just want to add the same def.addammo type line that I mentioned earlier, except that it seems as if in Source multiplayer that the Convars are not convars, they're hard-coded values, so player damage, NPC damage, and maximum arrow are hard-coded values, and that the player damage and NPC damage is set to zero. So I just thought I'd point that out as well. And one last thing for convenience, you can go to player.cpp, find the cheat impulse commands function, and case number 101, which is basically impulse 101, and add the lines give ammo of whatever you want. In this case, I set the maximum amount of flares to five. So I'll give five of the flare round ammo type in the section where there's a bunch of give ammo functions. And then give named item of weapon flare gun inside of the section where there's a load of give named item functions. So the only thing you need to do now is acquire the view model, world model, materials, the weapon script, and the reload sound for the flare gun. 
which I'm getting all of this from the missing information mods. And so now you should be able to compile the solution and the flare gun should work perfectly fine. Now you, what you should see is that the flare gun doesn't ignite stuff that you might expect it to ignite like explosive bowels or certain NPCs. And it can also get themselves embedded into certain materials that you think the flare shouldn't get embedded to like metallic surfaces. So in that case, I'm going to cover a couple of minor changes that you might want to consider and then get into the game breaking glitch. So inside of weaponflaregun.cpp, inside of the flare touch function for the actual flares, uh, you can uncomment the line that says P other arrow take damage and the next line which is m underscore fl next damage you'll be able to see in the video the lines that i'm talking about however there's going to be an error because there's a parameter called i damage which is undefined so above that you can add int i damage equals zero and this should allow stuff like explosive barrels to be ignitable when a flare touches them because there's a call that takes damage which is incendiary damage and it's not enough to cause the explosive bowl to blow up per se, but it gives it a signal to ignite, which is something that you might want to consider doing. And a little bit further down inside of this same function, you should also see a line that goes something like if p data arrow game material equals equals c inside of, you know, inverted commas or whatever. And if you want to, this allows the flares to embed themselves into particular materials. So if you uncomment this line again you're going to get an error but all you want to do is change it so it says p data arrow game dot material equals equals then whatever you want so by default c and w relate to concrete and wooden textures so you can expand this to add whatever you want so if you wanted to have flares embed themselves into plaster materials then you'd have to look into surface properties dot text to realize that plaster is actually a dirt type and you can consult either surface properties.txt or decals.h to basically know that dirt is d um, so certain material types are given particular letters so they're defined in decals.h and then also in surface properties.txt so that's just something to that, that's something to look into if you really want to is a bit complex i know and one final thing is that some NPCs might not be ignitable and that's actually not an issue with the flares. It's actually an issue with other classes in the source code. So for example, ant lions won't get ignited, but other NPCs like head crabs, zombies, metro cops, combine soldiers, they will all be ignitable. And the reason for this is inside of the NPC class definition, there's you should be a function called allowed to ignite. So for the head crabs, zombies, combine soldiers, metro police, this function does exist. And it returns true, which means they are allowed to be ignited. Whereas for ant lions, the function doesn't exist. And so the value is false because it uses the value that's defined in the base class, base AI, NPC, whatever. And that's always set to false. So that's why you can't always set certain NPCs on fire. So for the case of the ant lines, you simply want to add a virtual ball called allowed to ignite passing through void inputs and set it to return true as I show in the video. And if you compile the code at this point, then you should be able to ignite explosive barrels and NPCs like ant lines should now be allowed to be ignited and the flares will embed themselves into concrete and wooden surfaces, but nothing else. So that's just if you want a little bit of realism for the flares and now for the game breaking glitch now this is going to be hopefully a short section but it might not be now i was aware of this glitch for quite a long time but when preparing for this video i didn't seem to encounter the issue until mazdo provided a link to me uh, in dms of a video that they recorded and effectively it shows them messing around with the flare gun, the eye rifle, which is basically a better flare gun, still from Half-Life 2 beta. And from what I can gather, the issue occurs if a flare bounces off of a surface and then enters a water volume, then it kind of freezes. Now I could show you my notes at this point because I was initially going to say I had no idea what was causing this issue. 
I would say it wasn't a crash and it wasn't an assertion error. And from all my testing, I couldn't seem to figure out what was going on. And I speculated that it was an infinite loop that was causing this issue. I even managed to get a very unstable version of Source 2006 to work just to see if this issue persisted and it kinda didn't to be fair but then experimenting around with other stuff it seems as if it does exist. So I'll just show you some code on screen right now which was basically from when I was experimenting around with this issue and turn stuff like CPU monitoring and memory monitoring on. It just so happened to land in this function that I'm showing. Now, wh what is this function saying? Well, what it's doing, it's creating a pointer to an entity based off of an int index that all entities in the game is going to have when the game's loaded up and the map's loaded up and all that. And if the entity is valid, then it says while the entity is valid, then it checks to see if the entity is the player, and if it is, then it breaks out the while loop. Otherwise, the entity becomes the owner entity of the original entity. So I guess this is only meant to work for situations where the entity can trace back to the player to some description. Now, where does this function actually lie? Well, it actually exists in emit close caption. Yeah, who would have thought closed captions were the reason why the flares crashed the game? But yeah, it, it is. Believe it or not, this is actually the reason why this happens. So this function, emit closed caption, exists inside soundemittersystem.cpp, which is a shared file across the client and the server. And let's actually just get straight to the point. In weaponflaregun.cpp, inside of the flare touch function, after m underscore n bounces plus plus, after the whole flares embed themselves into material stuff that I just covered, then you'll see a set owner entity, this line, and that is the reason why the game crashes. So you just want to comment that out. And I said this only works in single player. So let's actually go into why this happens. So if you actually look into the emit closed caption function, then immediately at the start, you'll see that it says if max players is greater than one, or if max players is exactly equal to one and a boolean that determines if closed captions are enabled or not, if it's set to false, then the function returns immediately. So that's why this doesn't work in multiplayer, this crash at least, and this crash doesn't happen in single player if and only if closed captions are off. So you can experiment in Source 2013 multiplayer that if you try to turn closed captions on to any capacity, then nothing happens. So for Source 2013 multiplayer mods, you don't actually have to worry about this issue, but in single player mods, you won't get this crash if closed captions are off. But if they're on, then the function continues execution, which ends up getting to this while loop. And then because the flare is what's inputted into the while loop, then under normal circumstances, it'll input with the flare first, but then the flare's owner is actually the player, so that it's able to break out the loop. But if the flare bounces off a surface, then the flare's owner becomes itself, and then you'd have the flare entering the loop, and then the only entity of the flare is the same flare, and it just ends up going into an infinite loop forever that never breaks. And that's what caused the crash. So, as I speculated, it was an infinite loop. And due to the nature of the infinite loop, it was very difficult to determine where it was coming from, and just by sheer luck, I just so happened to figure out that it was because of closed captions. So it's funny how that works. But yeah, if you get rid of the set owner entity this line in flare touch inside of weapon flare gun .cbp and experiment around with this, then what you should find is that the crash no longer happens because the flare's owner isn't getting changed. It's going to be set to the player. And so everything works as it's supposed to and Happy days, right? So that's where I'm going to end this video off. Sorry if it comes across as a bit rushed and sort of crazy. I know I've not done this for a little while, so I just need to get back into the swing of things. And I thought that doing a video about the flare gun would be a nice, easy way to get back into doing things. So I do have a couple more ideas for tutorials coming. And so I hope you'd check those videos out, as well as some other stuff that may or may not be source related. So please let me know what you think in the comments section down below and I'll see you for the next video. Take care out there everyone.